I had um, been invited by Dr. Lukau, the Dr. Harman, and um, Harold Falkenberg, from Samuel Falkenberg, if I would be interested in making a proposal for a public work connected to the city of Hamburg. The idea early on was um, to find three points, one in Hamburg, one in uh, Wilhelmsburg, and one in Harburg, which could form the, the, the uh, connecting points for my installation. And we found three uh, tall places, places with tall buildings. At the center was the Energy Bunker. Uh, up in the north was Dijkta Hallen and uh, or Dijkta Hallen plus Der Spiegel, the Der Spiegel building. And <coughs> in the south was um, Sam Lord Falkenberg. The original idea had been to have lighthouse beams that would that would project an arc across the uh, across the city. Uh, much like a lighthouse uh, at sea. And um, the idea had been that um, there would be a kind of, uh, from music, a call and response structure where you would have uh, the, the lighthouse at the centre in Wilhelmsburg would do a full 360 degree rotation, which would then be answered by two 180 degree rotations from the north and from the south. Now there was one uh, big setback we had, which is, you recall that I said uh, I wanted to have lighthouses with moving beams. And the harbour master <coughs> uh, was not, would not uh, agree to that. He, he felt it was a danger to his, his river traffic and said absolutely not. And at which point it looked like the project was dead in the water, but I said, well, look, let me think about it. And actually, um, on thinking about it, I realised it could be a very effective, slightly different piece done, but based on the same principles, which actually might even be better. Early in the evening, after dark, uh, you'll see three um, pencil-slim beams of light, white light, crossing the sky above the city. This will, this will occur um, every night for about 15 minutes each evening, and uh, once a week, that the, the configuration that you see in the sky will change. We alter the angle of the projection. The piece runs for a year and um, has in fact uh, four cycles to it. They're not specifically attached to the season, but they are going to, the, obviously the piece will be seen in all, all those different seasons. Um, the important thing about um, my structure in time is that I've designated the starting point every night to be exactly 90 minutes after sunset. What that means is that each night the time it begins gets later by about a minute or two each night. And so uh, during the winter uh, the piece may be visible as early as 6 o'clock in the evening, uh, but in, the, in midsummer it could be as late as 11 o'clock at night. Working outdoors is a relatively new thing for me, at least in the last 10 years. Uh, when I started as a young artist, I was doing performances, quite large scale in landscape. But I've returned to this largest possibility in the last three, four, five years. I've made a number of proposals. Um, for instance, there's one proposal that's still in the proposal stage uh, for a piece in uh, Auckland, New Zealand, which, which would adapt a disused industrial cement uh, um, silo, a cylindrical building made of concrete adapted to become a receiving chamber for an enormous shaft of sunlight. Um, and at night it becomes a lighthouse which sends a single beam once a night across the harbour of Auckland. That's a proposal stage piece. A piece that's actually in production is a piece called Column, which is uh, we're still working on in Liverpool in the UK, 
which is a column of cloud that rises into the sky, a spinning column of cloud, forming a kind of ephemeral landmark. Um, this piece for Hamburg is really um, less a landmark, more a kind of communication between different neighbourhoods, if you like, using these lines of light. My works, both indoor and outdoor, have certain things in common. Uh, one is that they don't really ever quite fit into a single category. Um, instead, they, they hover between various different categories. So, for instance, they are uh, sculpture, or sculptural, shall we say, in that they occupy three-dimensional space. Um, they require the, uh, the observer to walk around them, to go through them, to sort of um, occupy space with them in order to understand how they're, how they're, how they're made, how they're shaped. Also, uh, they are almost always cinematic. By that I mean they have a structure, uh, a durational structure. They change over time. There's a shape. Uh, as you watch them, there's a shape that unfolds over time, which makes them related to cinema. Um, and then there's another element, which is that it would appear that almost every one of these works is also a drawing. Um, the solid light works be, uh, are, are, are based on the projected drawing, which is made three-dimensional by the mist in the air. Um, the Hamburg piece, uh, Crossing the Elbe, is uh, very much um, still a line. It's a line drawing. It's, a, it's drawing a line across uh, the sky, which is a sort of map, if you like. I'm a believer in John Cage's dictum that everybody is in the best seat. And I don't think there is a sort of ideal vantage point. Certainly, if you want to find, if you want to have a, a vantage point where you can see all three beams, you might want to look for a tall building or, or find a part of the city where you will be able to see all three. But I don't believe that that is essential at any one moment. I think it's good over a number of months if you've seen all three. But I think you may see just one very beautifully. The other two are rather indistinct. You may see two. You may see all three. Uh, these are, there's no wrong way to see it. And the other thing to say is that, of course, the weather itself is going to influence what you see. Well, I think crossing the Elba is a... It's, a, it's an installation that really can be approached in many different ways. Um, and there's no ideal way. It really depends how you wish to do it. I mean, first of all, it's important to say with a public work, unlike a museum work where when you go into the room, you know you're going to look at art. In a public work, there'll be many people looking who may not necessarily be viewing it in that way. They may see it accidentally and wonder about it. They may know it's there and sort of glance at it as they hurry somewhere. Um, and then there are those that perhaps will want to look a little harder. And all these are legitimate ways to look at something which, after all, is just above our heads.